Okay, thank you. Welcome everyone to our last but not least. This is a very important presentation teaching of physics courses with open educational resources with Sasmita Hazra, Hazra, Assistant Professor of Physics at Cameron University. Welcome. Thank you so much for presenting today. Thank you. Um, as Chessy said, um, the topic of my presentation. Um, in this presentation, I'll be talking about my experience using open educational resources in teaching physics as well as astronomy courses. So when it comes to um, open educational resources, this is the definition from UNESCO. Any educational material related to teaching or research that is open to public in any format is considered as open educational resources. Um, the motivation behind using open educational resources, the key points are um, summarized in with five R's, um, retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. Um, so when it comes to me and uh, the motivation behind using open educational resources, I always think back about my undergraduate years when um, I had to wait um, um, to buy the textbook because they used to be so expensive uh, to save the money and buy a textbook. I could not afford to buy it at the beginning of the semester. And uh, research shows um, in US, students spend about $600 to $1,000 for buying textbook. And Carnegie Higher Education published that uh, seven out of 10 students do not buy textbooks because due to the cost. Um, that is also one of the motivation for me to use open educational resources as much as possible. Another thing is that I could revise those material. I could add different uh, concepts, problems according to uh, the requirement of the course, which I will be talking about today. Um, okay, here we go. For my um, algebra-based physics courses, introductory level physics courses, I use um, open text textbooks. These textbooks are very high quality. The content is very well written, including the diagram, high quality diagram, self-explanatory diagram. Also, I get to access all the instructor material for free using my open text account. I get to get the PowerPoints, I get the solution to the problems. I like to use wide variety of problem for my physics courses and they also include conceptual um, connecting different key concepts problem. Um, they are thinking problem reasoning all different sorts of problems I included. Uh, similarly, for my um, calculus-based physics courses, I like to use university physics book that is also from OpenStax. These are also very high-quality textbooks, three volume of textbook that we use in calculus-based physics one and physics two. A lot of students um, have um, given me their feedback that they really liked using these uh, textbooks very much because they are, they are free and they are such a good quality textbooks. Uh, similarly, for my astronomy course, I use the open text textbook as a reference textbook. This textbook also has very good quality uh, figures um, explaining the concept. I have included some images, one of them at the beginning of the semester when we talk about celestial sphere, um, the concept about um, atmospheric window, um, electromagnetic waves and uh, spectra, all those explanations are very well uh, written there in a very uh, simple way. Uh, when it comes using open educational resources in my um, in my teaching, I use variety of material. I use material from the website. Some of the, my favorite websites I have included here. One of them is Physics Classroom. This is a website containing the basic physics. Um, they are categorized um, from mechanics, electricity, magnetism, up to light and optics, very, um, very um, comprehensive. All the concepts are discussed without any complicated math. This can be used for high school students as well as introductory level physics um, 
algebra-based or calculus-based courses. I also refer to this website to my upper division um, physics courses student to review their basic physics. They include a lot of tutorial videos, a lot of short quizzes, different short simulations are also included there. Um, another one is from um, American Association of Physics Teachers in their physics resources. Also, there are several uh, physics um, resources for effective teaching are uh, listed there. I often use that as well. Uh, another one physics repository is Marlowe Physics. I'm also one of the reviewer in this repository. Um, there are a lot of materials available in this um, Marlowe Physics Open Education resource for upper division physics courses like quantum mechanics, classical mechanics, thermal physics. Um, these materials are very well organized. Different problems are included as well as the solutions of the problems are also included. Another um, useful websites uh, for physics are MIT Open Courseware, which you all know about, and Khan Academy. Khan Academy, I refer to as a pre-lecture or pre-lecture activity, pre-lab activities for reviewing math, calculus, or any basic physics courses. These videos are really very good. I upload them in our learning management system for the course module. Similarly for astronomy courses also, there are a um, lot of useful websites available. One of them is astronomy.com. Um, they, they, that website um, is in discoveries in astronomy. Um, there are blogs, pictures, videos available, not only that. I like one section like Sky This Week, they talk about the um, planetary objects that will be seen in the sky this week. For example, this week they talk about a uh, moon blocks apart of the sun and Mercury will be behind the moon this week. So I just uh, include here a screenshot of that website. Another one is, of course, NASA. They have a wide variety of teaching materials available, including up to from middle school up to graduate level. And they have several different project titles, uh, teaching material, data, everything is available for public or free. And um, this is one of the, where the um, picture of the day, I just included that one. Sometimes I show it in to my class at the beginning. And um, today I was looking at the website and this is what it shows the picture of the day, um, sunset and moonset at the same time, this picture was taken in Taj Mahal, back in, in Taj Mahal, India. Another website I like to use is Space Weather. This is a very good website, not only with the latest discoveries in space, science related, and also they provide data related to the solar geomagnetic condition. They have a picture with the sun, um, the sunspot, if there is any sunspot available, the location of the sunspot and all. They also have a section of our prediction. Um, they have a section where um, they can upload public and upload the pictures. I um, mean, some of my students also interested in astrophotography. I encourage them to upload their pictures there. If that is selected, it can to be published in their website. Um, Universe Today Sky and Telescopes are also very good website uh, with a lot of astronomy related material, teaching materials, as well as research materials available. Uh, when it comes to my uh, teaching, I like to use technology. I see that modern teaching and learning has changed so much with the use of digital learning. Um, here, I like to use um, simulation. I see there is a question. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, I, as I say, I like to use technology in my teaching. So one of the, I'm a big fan of using simulation. Sometimes it's hard to bring a large equipment to the classroom or when the students are not familiar with the equipment, how do, how they, do they understand the concept. In that case, uh, simulation is a big help and a fair simulation developed by University of Colorado. I've been using it for a long time and they have simulation in different areas of physics, chemistry, and engineering. In physics, they have um, mechanics, sound, light, and optics, electricity, magnetism, all different areas of physics simulations are available. Um, one of the 
good thing about is that when I log into their account for free, I get the access to the different materials that are developed by instructor all around the world. I could download this material, revise them, and use it for my classes. Uh, very often, I use them as pre-lecture activity or pre-lab activity, and my students really like using those simulations to understand the concept. Another one is um, Star in a Box. This simulation is developed by Las Cameras Observatory. Um, this is a very good one to understand the life of a star, when the star could become supernova, when they could become red giant, um, how the size of the star, temperature of the star, luminosity of the star is related to the life cycle of the star explained very well. I get very good feedback from a student using this simulation. Another one, uh, which is named as size of the space, actually this one um, was suggested to me by one of my students last year. I really like it. This is the simulation showing the size of the uh, universe uh, starting from the astronaut to different planetary objects and the scale is shown. It's a really a good one. I like using them. Um, American Association of Physics teacher website, as well as University of Nebraska website also have different <clears throat> physics and astronomy virtual um, activities listed. Um, University of Nebraska astronomy there, um, they have different virtual activity related to um, Doppler effect related to motion of the star, lunar eclipse, solar eclipse. These are also very good activities for astronomy classes. Um, when it comes to uh, use of a smartphone, now we have been using several apps starting from uh, lifestyle, health, uh, education, and all different varieties of apps available. I like to use apps for my teaching as well. Um, one of the very popular one is, um, now I'll be talking about all the free apps here, is, is Skyview Light. Um, this is an app that normally I assign this activity at the beginning of semester in my astronomy course. Um, where the student take picture um, of the sky and they could understand the celestial object, um, understand about the constellation, location of the planetary objects and all. And um, I got so many good feedback with use of this app and students have like, they have said they have used this app with their friends, parents, grandparents. And sometimes students say this has become their um, nighttime family time with going outdoor and then see the sky with this app. So this is a really very good one. Um, another one, the NASA app, they also have a um, lot of latest discoveries, NASA's mission, future mission, location of International Space Station, all different um, and podcast videos are all available in NASA's app as well. And this is a physics toolkit app. Um, I like to use it for my upper level physics classes because very often I see students either forget their basic formula or they forget how to use it, <coughs> excuse me. So this app is very convenient showing the basic formula and the parameters related to this. They can plug in the numbers and get the values and also this is a very good one. So all these apps that I have shown here are for free. Excuse me. Um, another, um, another thing I like to use is podcasts. Podcasts on, on nowadays are very popular. So I like to listen to podcasts. And so I like to give this activity as a classroom activity. Normally for to my astronomy class, general physical science class, as well as intro to physics literature class, where I have assigned them as activity to listen to a physics or astronomy related podcast and later on talk about it in the class, key concepts, the future of that technology, how it's going to be. So here I have listed some of the popular podcasts. Um, uh, Mindscape is a very good podcast talking about structural engineering, civil engineering, physics, latest technology up to um, the intellectual property, all different um, areas related to that it talks about. Uh, Star Talk, many, many of us know about, uh, that's the podcast from Anil Degas, talk about popular culture, astronomy, science, and everything. So I really like those I've been using them in my classes. Any student like to listen to this as well? 
Um, not only in my teaching at Cameron University, I have been actively involved with um, undergraduate research. So we, um, I have worked set with my students several projects using this open educational research data. Oh, one of my projects was um, from Last Cameras Observatory, where we have used robotic telescope data. And these telescopes are located on all the continent where our students get to use, schedule the time and get the data online available for free. And this is very well organized data, very easy to understand. And one of my students have worked with this data and the photometric study of stars. And the students was uh, successful using this data and could also publish a peer review paper as a first author, as an undergraduate student. This is a very big accomplishment using all open educational resources. Um, another area of my research is space weather, space physics. There also I have been using all open educational resources, the data available from NASA related to solar activity, geomagnetic activity, different satellite ground-based observation we have been using. And using those also, two of our papers are in pipeline for publication. So a student have, when in one of the projects, student have worked with um, solar activity measurement for different solar cycle. In another one, a student have measured <clears throat> excuse me, uh, atmospheric ion density measurements with respect to the solar activity. So these are in a nutshell how I have been using open educational resources for my teaching as well as research. <coughs> excuse me. So now when I think about um, the future of open educational resources, research shows that the future of education is open. Um, actually, this path started from MIT's coursework. Now we have so many resources, so many open course videos, repositories are available with open educational resources. However, our faculty instructor, we still need uh, motivation and awareness to use this, that these are quality content available for free online. Uh, I really appreciate Oklahoma Online Consortium for arranging this summit. This really create awareness among faculty. Thank you for that. Now, when I say so many resources are available, it's often hard to find the quality resource or um, effective resource that I could use for that particular class. I was reading about that and there was a very good um, analogy that I read. And just like we have nowadays um, the map or Google map, Apple map that we use to go from one place to another place. They are so interactive, so easy to use. We can change the route, we can add a stop. Similarly, with uh, modern days, so much educational data, big data available. Uh, in future, there will be educational map developed where the user would get the content or the material in a very organized way, in a very user-friendly way. I'm looking forward to that. And um, this is the my end of my talk. I really acknowledge Cameron University, Oklahoma Online Consortium for organizing this. Thank you for that. And I appreciate all the open educational resource developer their work that I have been using in my research, in my teaching. Thank you so much for that. And if you, if you or if you think any of your colleague would be using um, these um, physics resources, feel free to let me know. I have my email ID here. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Do you have any questions, any questions from the panel? Dr. Hazard, I would be curious to know if any of your colleagues have taken on OER in their courses after seeing what you've done and these free resources that you seem to find, which I think it's pretty amazing that many of these are even government produced resources, uh, which I think that's great for lifelong learning. But I'm just curious to know the influence that you might have had with your colleagues about OER. Yes, thank you for that question. That's a good question. Yes, before joining Cameron University in our department, we were not using open educational textbook or anything. Um, when I started, um, the physics textbook was a different publisher. When I started, another of my colleagues also started using the same textbook and, and they also liked it using it. 
yeah that's why i was saying that awareness like how we can use it and effectively is this type of summit are really helpful that's really great to hear yeah, thank you we see in the chat yeah um kate here are no questions but uh, we'll try to connect my faculty with you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you could. I uh, would be happy to share those resources. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, Jennifer Holmes also wrote. I'm definitely sharing this info out with our physics folks. Yes, please share. They're definitely a great resource to have. Thank you so much um, for presenting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you.